Hello, welcome to the New York State's newborn screening program here at the Department of Health's Wadsworth Center. As you may know, our laboratory performs more than 12 million tests annually, screening every baby born in New York for more than 45 congenital conditions and for exposure to HIV. Accurate and prompt testing at birth allows early follow-up, diagnosis, and medical intervention. As a health professional collecting newborn specimens, you are vital in this process. This training video provides an overview of the important steps necessary to perform a complete and timely collection. Thank you for taking time to familiarize yourself with this protocol. Please do not hesitate to contact us with any questions. Our contact information will appear at the end of this video. Now let's get started. The initial step is to prepare the blood collection card. First, take notice of the expiration date on the collection form. Any questions regarding the forms can be directed to your hospital's newborn screening coordinator or you may call the newborn screening program staff at the number you'll see at the end of this video. The blood collection card contains a number of copies. The top pink copy is given to the mother. Make sure to inform her that she will need to give this pink copy to the infant's post-discharge health care provider to obtain the results of the screening. The green submitter copy of the specimen form remains in the infant's permanent medical record. The two remaining white newborn screening lab copies are returned to us after the blood collection is complete. Next, complete all the information on the blood collection form using only a blue or black ballpoint pen. Print accurately and legibly. Inaccurate or illegible information could result in delays in diagnostic testing and treatment of affected infants. Press firmly as you write so the imprint goes through all of the copies on the blood collection card. Hospitals may opt to submit the specimen information in an electronic format through the RDE, or Remote Demographic Entry, a web-based application, or an HL7 automated interface between the hospital and the newborn screening program. Once trained and approved, the hospital can use a label to replace the handwriting on the form. If your hospital is already participating in electronic data transmission, complete the form as instructed when you receive the training. To participate in electronic data transmission or for questions or information on the RDE or HL7 transfer, please call the Newborn Screening Program. To start, you will need a warm moist cloth or compress, gloves, sterile 70% alcohol pads, a sterile lancet with a tip not to exceed 2 millimeters deep. Standardized incision devices are available that produce a 1 millimeter deep by 2.5 millimeter long incision. Other devices are available that have been developed specifically for premature infants. You will also need sterile gauze pads, a current filter paper blood collection form, and puncture site aftercare supplies per your hospital's policy. Now you are ready to perform the heel stick procedure. Wash your hands. Place the infant's leg lower than the heart to increase venous pressure and enhance blood flow. Moisten a soft cloth with warm water. Warm the heel with the moistened cloth for three to five minutes to help increase blood flow. Use gloves according to your hospital's policy. Choose an appropriate puncture site. Guidance is provided on the back of the collection form. Cleanse the site with an alcohol prep pad. Wipe away the alcohol with a sterile gauze pad and air dry. Any alcohol left on the skin may cause a specimen to become unsuitable and thus untestable. Puncture the heel with the lancet on the sole of the foot. Make sure to press the lancet firmly against the skin 
prior to activating the device. Wipe away the first drop of blood with a sterile gauze pad. This first drop may contain tissue fluid that could contaminate or dilute the specimen. Allow another large drop of blood to form. It should be large enough to soak into the filter paper to fill or almost fill the circle. Lightly touch the filter paper to the large drop, allowing it to absorb evenly. Either side of the filter paper may be used, but apply the blood to one side only. Allow the blood to soak through the filter paper, check both sides, and fill the circle. Whenever possible, use one drop and stop. Do not let the filter paper come into contact with the infant's skin. Very gentle, intermittent pressure may be applied to the area surrounding the puncture site. However, do not milk or squeeze the area. This can create serum rings leading to an unsuitable specimen that cannot be tested. If the first drop of blood does not fill the circle completely or most of the way, you may immediately express another blood drop and continue to fill the circle. This must be done within a few seconds of the placement of the first drop in order to prevent clotting. Alternatively, allow a larger drop to form and move on to the next four circles. If more than two drops are required to fill a single circle or more than 10 seconds elapses between the application of blood to the filter paper, prepare to puncture the heel a second time at a different site. Take special precaution to ensure that the baby's heel has been properly warmed and that you firmly press the lancet against the skin prior to activating the device. Most often, these steps will allow blood to flow more freely for sampling. Otherwise, there will be layering of the dried blood spot. Such layering renders the circle unsuitable for testing. Fill in all of the remaining circles. If the blood flow decreases, repeat the collection procedure selecting the different puncture site and continue to fill the filter paper circles. Do not use capillary tubes, venous blood, or a means other than the heel stick procedure to obtain the blood specimen. Once all the circles on the filter paper are full, complete aftercare to the puncture site is specified by your institution. Your freshly collected specimen should look like this. Now that you have successfully collected the newborn screening specimen, it is important to handle it correctly. Even if you used perfect technique to collect the blood, improper handling and transport of the specimen can still result in a sample that is unsuitable for testing. Allow the specimen to air dry completely on a flat, non-absorbent surface for at least four hours away from heat and direct sunlight. Do not allow the protective flap to touch the blood at any time during the four hour drying period. Do not otherwise touch or smear the wet blood spot. Do not refrigerate the specimen. While drying, never allow one filter paper to come in contact with another. We recommend use of a drying rack. Once the specimen is dry, confirm that you have a valid specimen. If not, a repeat heel stick is required to ensure that the testing can be performed. Here we have a card with correctly collected blood spots. The perfect specimen has all of the information legibly recorded on the blood collection form, is collected from an infant after the first 24 hours of life, has no foreign contaminants on the filter paper, has all printed circles completely filled with blood that is applied evenly on one side of the filter paper free of layering and clots, and is dried for at least four hours on a flat, clean, non-absorbent surface away from direct heat and sunlight. And lastly, it's covered by the safety flap before mailing after drying is complete. On average, approximately 2 to 3 percent of the specimens received by the newborn screening program are unsuitable for testing. However, sites with stringent quality assurance programs have rates of less than 0.5 percent. 
please contact the New York State Newborn Screening Program for help in reducing your hospital's unsuitable rate below the average. The following are instances known to give erroneous laboratory results. These specimens cannot be tested and you will be required to collect another blood sample. Clotted and layered specimens are the most common reason a sample cannot be tested. Clotting and layering can happen when multiple drops of blood are applied to the same circle on the filter paper or when the circles on both sides of the filter paper were filled. Samples that are drawn into syringes and then spotted onto the collection form often have small clots causing the sample to become unsuitable. The best way to prevent this is to get good blood flow from the infant and to allow a large drop of blood to form prior to application to the filter paper. If blood is running down the heel, try to position the infants so that their heel is facing down. First, is there enough blood on the card for the testing laboratory to complete the panel of newborn screening tests? A suitable specimen should fill or almost fill the filter paper circles. The best way to check is to look at the filter paper on both front and back. Make sure that the back of the filter has been completely saturated with blood. A specimen with a quantity of blood that is insufficient for testing may be caused by removing the filter paper from the drop before the blood completely fills the circle or soaks through to the other side. It can also be caused by touching the filter paper to a blood drop that is too small. Is a specimen suitable for testing? Several things can affect the quality of the blood collection resulting in a specimen that is unsuitable for testing. Scratched or abraded specimens can be caused by applying blood with a capillary tube, a needle, or some other device. A specimen that is still wet when it's received will not be tested. Make sure that the specimen is dried for a minimum of four hours and do not ship specimens in plastic bags. A specimen that appears supersaturated can be caused by applying excessive blood to the filter paper, usually with a device or by applying the blood to both sides of the filter paper. Or if the baby is bleeding quickly, it may be difficult to move from circle to circle on the filter paper. Specimens that appear diluted, discolored, or contaminated can be caused by milking the puncture or applying excessive pressure after the puncture or allowing foreign substances to come in contact with the filter paper. Specimens with serum rings can be hard to detect. Look at the edge of the blood spot for a change in color. Serum rings can be caused by wet alcohol left on the skin before puncturing the heel, by milking or squeezing the area around the puncture site, by improper drying, or by allowing the filter paper to come in contact with contaminants, and lastly by applying blood to the filter paper with a capillary tube. If the samples are unsuitable for any of these reasons, redraw a valid specimen. If samples reach the program and are determined to be unsuitable for testing, your hospital will be contacted to have the baby sample redrawn. This may require someone from your hospital recalling a parent and infant back to the hospital if the infant has already been discharged. Now you have a valid specimen ready for shipment to the Wadsworth Center for testing. Place the protective flap over the dried blood. Within 24 hours of collection, ship the dried specimens to us using our specified delivery provider. The specimen should be received by the newborn screening program no later than 48 hours after collection. Place all the specimens to be shipped together and record their lab ID numbers on the newborn screening transport form. Count the number of specimens included in the envelope and write that number in the large circle on the form. Fill in the rest of the form and include the courier tracking number. Keep a copy of that form for your records. Remember, do not use plastic bags to ship the blood collection forms. Do not staple or tape anything to the forms or write in the gray area. The only labels on the front of the form should be the state approved labels used when the demographic information is submitted via electronic data transmission. Place the transport form and the specimens in the delivery envelope in preparation for pickup by the courier. Do not bundle or hold specimens to ship multiple days at one time. 
Specimens should be shipped every day and you should keep a log of samples shipped and the tracking number for each package. Specimens will not be tested if they are received more than 14 days after collection. Keep the green submitter copy for your records as proof the specimen was collected. It is recommended the green copy be placed in the infant's medical record. Be sure to give the top pink copy to the parents and remind them to ask their pediatrician for results of the screen. Results are typically available seven business days after the specimen is received. Call to alert the testing laboratory or note on the blood collection form where there is information relevant to one of the disorders on the screening panel, such as a known family history, a prenatal test result in the baby or mother's record, for example, cystic fibrosis carrier screening and subsequent prenatal results, and or early signs of any of the disorders on the panel. That's the process for collecting and submitting newborn screening specimens. It's important that you perform each step correctly and within the appropriate time frame. While newborn screening tests provide an opportunity to detect potentially life-threatening disorders early, before symptoms appear, these results are not diagnostic. Physicians should immediately evaluate any infant displaying characteristics consistent with the screen disorders. All the information in this video and much more information on newborn screening, including the tested disorders, is available on our website. Please do not hesitate to contact us by phone or email with any questions. We always appreciate feedback and comments regarding our program. On behalf of New York's newborns and their parents, thank you for your commitment to helping New York's infants get a healthy start in life.